everyone, it's Nicole for Simon Says Stamp, and today I'm excited to bring you the December 2022 edition of Making the Cut. Making the Cut is my monthly series here on Simon Says Stamp where we talk about all things die cutting. We are going to start with these four and a quarter by five and a half inch panels of smooth white cardstock. I'm using 110 pound weight Nina smooth white cardstock, and I'm going to use the positively saturated ink, applying the lightest shade from each trio to the center of my panel and the medium shade on the top and the bottom. We're going to do this in four different colorways because we are going to be taking the amazing new Heart Pains die from the Hugs December 2022 release, and we're going to die cut each of these backgrounds after we apply a whole bunch of fun goodness to each of these. My plan with these backgrounds was to create basically my own pattern paper by inking, splattering with a little bit of water for distress, stamping over the background with a background stamp, and then finally die cutting and piecing all of the different elements together. I'm a quilter, and so a, I didn't realize this at the time, but as I put together the backgrounds, I feel like the backgrounds really kind of look like putting together a quilt block. So it was kind of a happy accident. Now, I love hearts anytime. I don't think hearts have to be just for Valentine's Day or a love themed occasion. If you know me, you know that I am trying to sneak a heart into almost any project. So this heart pain background is a great one for all kinds of occasions. The other thing that I am a huge fan of is designing a card that will work for multiple occasions. I made birthday cards today, but if you need love cards, friend cards, anniversary cards, thinking of you cards, pretty much anything you can think of, this design is going to work for that simply by switching up the sentiments you use on top of the design and maybe altering the colors. So lots of different cards can be made with this and you can do maybe eight different colorways. I'm doing four different colorways, so each card is gonna be represented at least twice with each color I'm using. I'm using the pink trio, the red trio, the aqua trio, and the purple trio for my cards today. And so it definitely lends itself to Valentine's or love themed projects, if that's what you're going for. I think you could just as easily do maybe some red, pinks, gr and greens, maybe even throw in a little aqua for a very modern Christmas feel if you want to. Um, I think it would be beautiful to maybe stamp a snowflake on the background. There's lots of great snowflake background stamps and do a winter type theme. Maybe do all shades of blues and purples. Um, stamp it with a snowflake background and do a bunch of thank you cards or whatever the case may be. So definitely uh, kind of let some of those ideas start rolling around in your mind and see what you can create with something similar. What I love about this is I took background stamps from my stash, the inks that from my stash, and I'm using a new product. I love being able to mix and match older product with newer product to totally come up with an original type of project. So I am going to go ahead and ink the rest of these. I am using the Simon Says Stamp glass mat underneath, which makes cleanup a snap. I usually work on a self-healing mat, but when you're inking, it is so much easier to clean up off of glass. So you'll notice that I just clean up on my glass each time. Now, unfortunately, my rag had some blue ink on it. And I decided uh, that's okay. I am not going to worry about the blue ink that transferred to the pink background. We're just going to leave it and see if that kind of gets disguised and covered up when we stamp our background stamps on top or when we add our elements to the rest of the card. So even if you have a little smudge here and there, oftentimes you can disguise it with things that you add to your card or with creative die cutting or 
embellishment placement. So don't be afraid to go ahead and save those pieces that you may think are lost. It happens a lot where I will get ink on my finger, touch a project, mess it up, or do like I did here where I accidentally transferred a darker ink to the lighter background. So I always try to find a way to save it before throwing it away and starting over. Let's go ahead and splatter this last background. I just love how the positively saturated inks react with water. Those great little uh, lighter oxidized splatters are going to look amazing. Now, once we have all of our backgrounds, oh my gosh, you guys, look how beautiful these are. They are just like, uh, eye candy. I absolutely love them. I am going to place my backgrounds in the Misty and what I want to do is I'm going to grab two different background stamps and I am going to stamp two of the backgrounds with one of the background stamps. This is the tiny dots and hearts from Simon Says Stamp. Let's remove that foam. Now I do think the sticky mats from my Sweet Petunia from Misty really help here. I'm gonna take that darkest ink shade, in this case Amethyst, from the Positively Saturated Ink, and I am going to stamp over my background for that tone-on-tone -tone look with my darkest shade. So we've got our light and medium on the background, we have some oxidized water splatter, and then finally finishing with our stamped background. And again, we're gonna do two backgrounds with the tiny dots and hearts. And I ended up doing the purple background and the red background with this one. So we're gonna use cherry ink over the red background. I love background stamps. I also very much like creating my own pattern paper. You could el eliminate a lot of the steps and simply do the same technique with pattern papers, and that would make this a even faster project. So I wanna make sure and clean my stamp up. I'm not gonna use this one again. We're actually gonna switch to our other background stamp. I decided we've got our dots and little hearts. I wanted something completely different. Um, a plaid is always a good idea, or a gingham, but I'm gonna use the soft plaid background from Simon Says Stamp, and we're going to use the rose ink to ink up the soft plaid background and stamp that over the pink. And I'm gonna do a nice, firm press all over my Misty. Oh my gosh, look how amazing that looks. Look how amazing it looks next to the tiny dots and hearts could not love this more. So we are gonna go ahead and repeat this then for our aqua background using ocean ink. Now, any of that ink that gets on your sticky mat for your Misty, like you see here that I have, that I always keep in my Misty to hold my paper in place, I have found I just run it under a faucet and that will remove the majority of the ink and then I just set it in a drying rack to dry. So mine gets a little stained, but that way I can get rid of any of that ink sitting on top. Oh my gosh, that is beautiful too. Oh, I love these backgrounds. And this is a fantastic way to create custom pattern paper backgrounds. If you maybe don't have a card or pardon me, a pattern paper to match your project. Next, we're going to take that heart pain die and we are going to die cut each of these backgrounds we created with the die. Now what I found worked the best was carefully removing it from my cutting plates, from my die cutting machine, and laying it out in order. And this is important, um, especially with a directional print. So the tiny dots and hearts, the heart does have a directional print, and I do want those to go the right way. And I don't wanna spend all of my time trying to figure out which of these puzzle pieces goes where. So I found it easiest to just take the time to lay them out exactly how they go. And then I can simply piece them all together on my background. I am going to then take four sheets of five and a half by eight and a half smooth white cardstock and die cut white frames. I will have a little waste with the 
white cardstock inside. I'm not going to use it on this project. You could save it to use if you want to or throw it away. I'm simply going to use the frame to do an inlay technique. Inlay die cutting is a fantastic go-to technique that leaves you with amazing results every single time. And in this case, we're doing the inlay design where it looks like we're inlaying pattern paper, but of course it's pattern paper that we have made. Then I'm gonna go ahead and put glue all over the top four sections, and I'm going to carefully, from each of my nice little stacks, piece together my background. And as you watch these backgrounds come together, they are amazing. I could not be happier with how these work. So because I did four patterns, that is going to leave, and I'm using two patterns per card, that will leave me with four cards. As I mentioned earlier, if you wanted to do, let's say rainbows going around this heart pane, and you do eight different colors, you would, need, you would end up with eight cards. So there, I just tried to find a way to not have any waste of the beautiful inked and stamped pattern paper I created. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the heart in the center open for now. We are gonna use the hearts that we die cut, but I'm going to pop them up, so we'll just do that here in a little bit. I'm gonna speed up the video and simply go ahead and finish piecing together the rest of our backgrounds. Now, if you wanted to do more of a monochromatic look, I also think another very fun idea would be to do maybe the same color of background, or let's say shades of blue, and you just do a different background on each of them, and you could do a very monochromatic inlay design. That would be beautiful. I'm thinking like, let's say you go from, from aqua to kind of teal, blue, lilac, purple, that kind of thing. I think that would be gorgeous. Um, that would definitely work really well with a snowflake type of theme since we're heading into January, believe it or not. <laughs> um, I just, I always kind of think of snowflake theme or snowmen in that month. And then we'll just continue. I have to say laying out the backgrounds made this go so much quicker than trying to dig through a pile of pieces and figure out the direction each of them go. I'm using the top fold A2 size cards from Simon Says Stamp to create my cards today. These are my go-to card bases. I use them 99.9% .9 of the time. I absolutely love them and highly, highly recommend them. So we'll just add these last few pieces. And then we're going to take some foam adhesive from Simon Says Stamp, place it on the back of our hearts and pop them up in the middle. You could even take this opportunity to die cut the panel again from a different color of cardstock if you wanted to and pop it up. But I wanted to use these hearts on my card so I simply put a different background in the center of each. Popping it up with foam adhesive is a go-to technique as well as it just draws your eye in a little bit to that popped up heart. And we'll just do this for each one of the backgrounds. Now the next thing we're gonna do is add our sentiments. With a background where we've spent this much time creating a beautiful patterned background, which is the focal point of the design, this heart pains die is absolutely incredible and you don't need a ton of extra embellishment with a bold die cut like this. I'm going to do a couple of sentiments and then I'm going to finish with some additional hearts. I couldn't leave it with just that one heart in the center. I think we need some shiny, sparkly hearts, don't you think? So we are going to take the big and bold birthday, not birthday, the big and bold stamp set. It is a stamp set filled with lots of different sentiments. I am gonna use the happy birthday, but there are things like hi, congrats, thinking of you, miss you, any of those would work as well. 
I'm going to stamp the happy birthday on a five and a half by eight and a half inch panel of smooth white cardstock, and I'm going to position it so that it's in the upper corner. I'm going to use the darkest color like I did for stamping the background over my inked panel. So I used ocean and then I'm going to spin my paper, not move my stamp, and we will stamp cherry. Then I'm going to flip my paper over and in the opposite corner, we're going to stamp the other two sentiments. This is a great way to maximize your cardstock and utilize all of it. So there is a little bit of rose and then we'll use some amethyst. Now, before we start die cutting, I am going to take the Tiny Words birthday stamp set and we are going to stamp a little phrase or a smaller phrase, in this case, enjoy your day, from the Tiny Words birthday stamp set. It's one of my go-tos. I often love to use a big bold sentiment and then use a smaller sentiment strip or phrase with that bigger sentiment, whether it's die cut, whether it's stamped. In this case, it's going to be stamped and die cut. These sentiments from the bigger, the big and bold stamp set have coordinating dies, which I love. So we're just going to stamp that right underneath and then we will use a sentiment label die to die cut each of these greetings. I'm using some VersaFine Onyx Black ink to stamp this greeting so that it really stands out. I will die cut everything by using the coordinating dies and then it's going to be time to put it all together and grab those remaining few embellishments to make these cards pop. When I'm die cutting, I always like to use either post-it tape or a low tack tape to hold the die in place as I run it through the die cutting machine so that that greeting doesn't shift. To maximize my time, I'm gonna go ahead and die cut the bigger sentiment as well as my sentiment strip. And I'm gonna do this for each of my backgrounds, or pardon me, my sentiments. We're going to take foam adhesive and only put it on the two ends of our greeting that hang off of the heart. We're going to center happy birthday right in the middle of our card in the center of the heart, glue it down in place with foam just under the ends, and then we're going to take some Simon Says Stamp red line tape and glue our sentiment strip in place right underneath, kind of down there to the right, almost looking like it sticks out from back behind the heart in the center. I've coordinated the sentiment with the color of heart that's in the center of the card. I love how bright and happy these are. So colorful, so fun. I highly recommend the Simon Says Stamp Positively Saturated Inks. They are absolutely amazing. Now from some Lux cardstock and some of the nesting hearts dies from Simon Says Stamp and some silver matte cardstock, I've die cut some hearts, plus I'm gonna use some Trinity Stamps hearts to help embellish a little bit. So I've got some colorful, some white, some sparkle, some silver matte. We're gonna glue all of these down to our card background, but they're yet, they're still tiny enough that it doesn't take away from the beautiful patterns and the beautiful design of that heart panes background. I will finish each of my cards by adding a pearl to this little dot there on the eye just to finish it off. So let's go ahead and finish the remaining cards and here is a look at all four. Thank you so much for joining me today for the December Making the Cut. The supplies I used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube for your convenience. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Hi there, I'm Heidi, Simon's mama and founder at simonsaysstamp.com. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you like what you just saw, 
be sure to press the thumbs up and subscribe to see more great content.